Hey, hey, partners, welcome back to Winning the Mindset Game with Money. This is lesson number three. So if this is the first video lesson that you're seeing in this series, don't worry, I left the links for lessons one and two down below. And if you are brand spanking new to my channel, my name is Matilda the Frugal Credinista. I own a financial education services firm where we educate, equip, and empower our community with tools, strategies, and resources so they can crush their financial goals. Now, every single year, I host a free full-length class, whether it's a challenge, a webinar, et cetera. And this year's class, mindset was the theme that my community voted for. Now, I also have a workbook that goes along with this class. If you want to dive deeper, do some um, exercises and reflections, and that's left below as well. And remember, if you are a wealth creator, a member inside of my Wealth on Fire Academy, go to your group training uh, section on your student dashboard, and you're going to see everything there, okay? So we are on lesson three of six. Let me do a quick recap. On day number one, we tackled the very essence of our finances our mindset. And we went over how the stories that we tell ourselves can often shape where we go on our finances. And the worksheet that I left you helped you to identify, challenge, and rewrite an empowering story that will motivate and push you to making real, tangible progress towards your financial goals, okay? And then on day number two, we dove into finding your perfect budget. And you learned that uh, selecting a method should align with your life, your goals, and your own unique style. And the worksheet for day number two took you over some tools and techniques and exercises on finding the budgeting method that is tailored specifically for you. Now today, today, lesson number three, we are diving into the psychology of spending. And so we're going to go over some um, or how to identify some emotional triggers. And those triggers are the things that lead to spending and how to pivot towards being more conscious and intentional when it comes to your money. OK, so whether you're here from day one or just joining us now, this uh, particular lesson is epic. So you're in the right place at the right time. All right. So let's get started. So picture this. It has just been one of those days, okay? Work was a hot mess. The kids are acting up. Your man is crazy, all right? And everything just feels heavier than usual. So now you're at home. You didn't eat. Your feet are up. You finally plop down on the couch, and you have grabbed your phone. And suddenly you find yourself into one of those deep Amazon scrolls. And not because you really need anything, right? It's simply because it feels good and it's helping just to soothe the toughness of today. So add some stuff to your cart, decide what you're going to get and hit that checkout button. So this scenario is common. It's actually a textbook example of what emotional spending is, what it entails. OK, because emotional spending isn't just about like an occasional shopping spree. That's a given, right? OK, it's about a habit that's formed a habit that's formed in response to emotional need. So if you're feeling stress, sadness, boredom, loneliness, joy, celebration, got a new job, let's flex, let's go shopping, right? It fills a void or it even enhances a mood and it soothes something immediate with something tangible. and does not tie to necessarily something that we truly need or want. So let's dive deeper. Let's peel back another layer. Sometimes emotional spending can stem from a sense of lack or feeling stuck. I was big on this one. Um, so let's say that you have something that you want to accomplish, you want to crush, but my goodness, it is feeling so far away and hard to reach, out of reach, and it just doesn't seem like you're going to get there. So instead of pressing on, sticking to it, continue to work hard, you begin to just settle for something that's within reach, that smaller, that instant gratification, something more affordable, a consolation prize, if you will, or a stand in for what you really want. So this behavior is something that speaks a little deeper or, or unacknowledged truth about emotional spending because it's rarely about like something you bought. It's rarely about what you purchased, okay? It's about the emotional payoff that you get. That brief lift up in your mood, that momentary feeling of satisfaction or exhale, that illusion of control in a world or a situation that just seems psychotic or chaotic. Maybe that's a better word, chaotic. 
but like any like quick fix is short. The satisfaction is short. So that spark of joy is often um, fleeting or temporary. And then it's replaced or will come back with interest, with tax, because it never really went away in the first place. We just slapped the Band-Aid on it. So the cycle can lead to debt, financial strain, a huge sense of dissatisfaction or discontentment from what we truly desire or need, okay? And you want to address or peel back the Band-Aid so you can start giving attention to what really the issue is, okay? You want to look for solutions to those inward challenges versus just temporarily solving or soothing the issue. And the real kicker is that this habit can keep us from reaching the very goals that might really bring about or that will, that happiness, that joy, that fulfillment, that peace of mind. So that temporary um, spark of joy is just um, taking us away from those bigger goals that we want to accomplish. So you want to recognize emotional spending for what it really is, what it really represents. And it's the first step towards change, acknowledging it, because your feelings are valid. The ways we choose to address them can be redirected, redefined, and realigned with our true intentions and goals. So this understanding opened the door to more mindful, conscious spending, spending that supports our financial well-being, that brings us closer to the life that we truly desire, want, and crave for ourselves. And so we want to transition from emotional spending to conscious spending. And it's not just shifting a behavior. It's literally a whole transformation of your mindset. And like I said, it begins with the awareness, the powerful guide that shows us our true motivations or the why before behind each purchase. Awareness is that first step. So like I said, cultivate awareness. How do you do that? By understanding the why behind your habits, right? Behind what's going on. Why am I doing this? Why, why, why? Digging deeper. Identify the trigger. What am I feeling? Anger, boredom, sadness, celebration. Recognize the pattern so then you can put things in place to address it. Number two is one of the things that I like is just pause and reflect. Once you're aware of the impulse to spend emotionally and you know why you're doing it, what you're feeling, Implement a mandatory pause. Think before I swipe. Do I need this? Does it fit into my financial plan that I need in order to really crush the goals that I really want to? The pause can be 24 hours, three days, a week, your choice. And then number three, you want to establish clear financial goals and have them in front of you often. Conscious spending is goal-oriented spending. Define what you're saving for, whether it's an emergency fund, a swoll, a dream vacation, retirement. Visualize these goals clearly and regularly remind yourself why conscious spending is so important. Every dollar saved from avoiding an emotional, unnecessary purchase is a dollar that can be put towards accomplishing your real goals. Then you want to go back to that spending plan that you've been creating or creating, and you want to make sure it sparks joy. View it as a joyful spending plan, a tool that empowers you to spend your money on what truly matters to you. Your budget should have a self-care fund or a vacay fund or a fun fund or something that really aligns with your values and makes you feel good and joy and not just like a fleeting moment of, moment of happiness. You want to reframe all of this so that your spending is more intentional and, and, and fulfilling, right? Fulfilling. So I left some additional tips in uh, today's worksheet because the trans transition from the shift towards mindful spending uh, requires a mix of more than just awareness. It, re it requires discipline. It requires practical strategies. And uh, you will have some failures and you're going to get back up and, and, and crush it, right? Because these methods um, aren't just about cutting expenses. They're about making each dollar that you spend work towards your broader life and financial goals. So I left some strategies for that as well so that you can start um, working on integrating these into like your daily habits and practices. Because it will take some intentionality. Basically, it's going to feel like some work at first, like you're forcing yourself. But the goal is to start implementing these strategies so that you can transform your approach to spending so that each transaction, each swipe is intentional and deliberate and supports your financial goals. I keep, see, I keep mentioning that, right? And since many of you um, have asked me about Wealth on Fire, we do have a ton of resources, masterclasses on demand, as well as live lessons and support calls on finances 
and mindset so that you can strengthen not just your spending and financial habits, but your mindset and your entire finances as well. Okay, so I left the link for more info on that below. Now, as we wrap up today, I want you to use that worksheet and really reflect on your habits. Apply the strategies that we discussed uh, today and also in the worksheet. And if you're ready to dig deeper, go deeper with me and my team, please smack that link so that you can learn about all of the resources inside of Wealth on Fire. Now, for lesson number four, you have a few days for that, you'll be learning something super important, okay? How to build resilience and overcome financial setbacks. Whew. That one was a big one for me. So we'll be diving into some strategies that I use and that I've learned along the way uh, so that your financial setbacks will just be a setup for a stronger bounce back or comeback. And I want you to know that every failure or perceived failure is really just feedback. It's really just feedback on how to step further and further into that room that we spoke a lot in lesson number one. Okay. Now, don't forget to uh, complete today's task inside of your worksheet. And then in those comments, I want you to share your thoughts. I want you to give me feedback. I want to share um, or hear about your experience and all of that good stuff below. I look forward to it and I will see you in lesson number four.